Nigeria commended for implementation models for the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Plus, over 2,500 delegates are participating in the APC governorship primary election in Ondo State. Hello and welcome to Panorama and the Network Service of the NTA. I'm Ian Ray John. <laughs> The presidency has responded to a number of opinion articles and newspaper editorials saying President Muhammadu Buhari is not in control of his administration, Joseph Johnson reports. In a statement, the presidency recognizes the right of Nigerians to hold their opinions as a demonstration of freedom of expression prevailing in the country. But they do have the responsibility to look beyond rhetorics. The presidency says whether it is Ibrahim Magu, Goswi Lakbabu, NDDC, NSITF and the others, Nigerians are bound to hold differing opinions, write letters, opinion columns, editorials and even stage lawful protests. But it is worried such comments are merely speaking the language of the opposition. The statement adds that authors of those comments pick up isolated issues like the ones in the EFCC and DDC and incidents of crime and corruption and paint them a phenomena orchestrated and happening because President Buhari's administration has decided to pursue cases of suspected wrongdoing in the anti-corruption agency, pension funds, and DDC and other government agencies to do a cover-up and not order audits and investigations as the president did would amount to a historic betrayal of the mandate and the faith placed in him by the nigerian people the presidency says president buhari's integrity uprightness and property are intact and well known which is why echoes Africa Union and the international community recognized President Buhari as champion of the anti-corruption fight in Africa. The statement further explains that President Buhari fully understands and bears the full weight of the solemn oath he swore to defend the nation's constitution, its citizens and territory, saying the Buhari government has done nothing to warrant their criticisms. It advises all Nigerians to join hands in rolling back corruption as President Buhari is determined not to be diverted by unfounded attacks. President Buhari, the statement concludes, is determined to get justice for all Nigerians on all the corruption cases being pursued. Joseph Johnson, NTA News. Now, looking at politics, over 2,500 delegates are participating in the ongoing APC governorship primary election in Ondo State. Accredited delegates are eager to elect their preferred candidate from the 11 aspirants. Olubukola Aduwa brings us an update on the ongoing primary. Thank you, studio. I'm at the International Culture and Event Centre, the Dome here in Accra, where delegates from the 18 local government areas of the state will be casting their votes for their preferred aspirants who will represent the APC come October 10 in the governorship election. Initially, delegates had moved to three locations in the state capital where accreditation was supposed to take place before that arrangement was changed. Although accreditation has not commenced as at the time I'm speaking, but 18 ballot boxes have been provided in the hall. Chairs are also arranged in compliance to COVID-19 protocols, while water and soaps have been placed at strategic locations for hand washing. We have covered every portion of, from the accreditation to the voting and the movement from the accreditation to the voting everywhere is covered. And it's back to the studio. Let's now talk about the pandemic. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Nigeria is now 36,663, following the announcement of 556 new cases of the, by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, last night. Out of the 556 new cases, Edo State recorded the daily highest of 104 cases, followed by Lagos with 96 cases and the FCT with 70 cases. Benue State has 66 
66 new cases, 61 in Oyo, 38 in Kaduna, 28 in Plateau, 9 in Oshun, and 14 in Akwaibom. Rivers, Katsina, and Ondo states recorded 13 new cases each, while Ogun has 6 cases, Kano 5, Nasarawa 4, Gombe, and Ikiti 2 cases each, and just one confirmed case in Borono state. Lagos State, being the epicenter of the COVID-19 pandemic in Nigeria, now has 13,438 confirmed cases, followed by FCT with 3,027 cases, while Oyo is third on the table with 2,167 cases. Out of the current 36,663 confirmed cases in Nigeria, 15,105 patients who recovered have been discharged with the death toll now 789. What are those aspects of church services you enjoyed in the past that have been overtaken by the emergence of COVID-19? And how are you coping with the new normal? In this report, correspondent Kelvin Samuel takes a look at the absence of hot dance sessions during church services and its impact on worshippers. <laughs> Before the advent of COVID-19 that has grounded virtually all human activities, forcing the new normal on the society, a church service was never complete without the good dance session that provided worshippers an ample opportunity to praise God with their dancing talents. However, the emergence of COVID-19 and the struggle to curtail its further spread has led to different drastic measures, most of which are against the normal ways things were done in the past. A situation that has greatly affected professional dancers and other entertainers who were usually invited to churches where they brush up their talents, entertain worshippers, and lead the congregation to the presence of God through dance and praises. <laughs> Other worshippers are not also finding the situation funny, as according to them, it often leads to boredom during service. People should just respect the guidelines of NCDC for our own safety. After the pandemic, the dancing can continue. I see dance on your seats, but not the same feeling you get when you're in front of each other, you're dancing with your partner. There's that kind of excitement, there's that kind of vibe it gives. We are simply obeying the government, we are managing. We cannot behave the way we used to behave. We cannot dance, even offering. We sit down one place, they walk around, collect our offering. Of a truth, the entire human race is faced with a challenging situation that has forced man to drop his ways of life. However, the best we can do at the moment is to embrace the new normal with the hope that God will take this evil cup away one way or the other. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTN. Please continue to do the needful because this too shall pass. If you just joined us, you're watching Panorama live on the network service of the NTA. The news continues in a bit. For now, the best and most efficient way to avoid getting infected is through regular hygienic and sanitary practices as well as social distancing. As individuals, we remain the greatest weapon to fight this pandemic. By washing our hands regularly with clean water and soap, disinfecting frequently used surfaces and areas, cutting into a tissue or elbow, and strictly adhering to infection prevention control measures in health facilities, we can contain this virus. is real. Steps to avoid this pandemic. Wash your hands regularly or sanitize your hands. 
keep social and physical distancing. Avoid crowded places. Stay at home unless absolutely necessary. Don't touch your eyes, nose or mouth if your hands are not clean. Avoid the spread of coronavirus. Coronavirus is real. Good to have you back. The Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board has urged all institutions to begin admission for candidates for first and second choices from the 21st of August 2020. JAM stated this in a document sent to all vice chancellors, rectors and provosts of universities, polytechnics and colleges of education. The board also released guidelines to all heads of tertiary institutions for the 2020 admission exercise. JAM Registrar Professor Ishak Oloyede warned against flouting decisions of its 2020 policy meeting held on June 16, noting that all admissions must be carried out in an honest and transparent manner using the central admission processing system. We further explained that the guideline for the 2020 admission exercise is expected to guide all the participants in the admission process adding that the exercise would be conducted for all institutions from 21st August 2020 to a later date that would be determined by the Federal Ministry of Education and communicated to all the institutions. This is because of the uncertainties of COVID-19, which makes it impossible to fix a terminal date. Now, still on the joint admissions and matriculation exercise, I have uh, with me the Herd of Public Affairs, JAMB, uh, to shed more light on the issues uh, regarding the 2020 JAMB admissions. I have uh, Dr. Fabian uh, Benjamin uh, joining us on Panorama. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, so the first issue uh, that readily comes to mind is a place of universities that have not uh, concluded registration of new intakes for the 2019-2020 academic session. Now, what happens to such universities? Well, what uh, we, we have issued is a guideline to tertiary institutions. And uh, in exercise of our powers as a regulator, we ought to give uh, a direction on how admission exercise should be conducted for the year. And uh, the universities, polytechnic colleges, the, what I mean as the Senate of the University, councils of the polytechnic and college of education in exercise of their power to conduct admission, we now decide on how to go about it. For instance, if a university has not finished its session or is uh, far behind, it may decide not to conduct admission for that year, for that uh, period of time. But many of them would start to say, okay, let us do this admission and bank it, depending when we finish a, a semester or a session. What I'm trying to say in essence that it all uh, depends on how the university's polytechnic or college education wants to go about it. But what we've said is that admissions will start in NS by 21st of August for those who feel that they are ready to start. All right, admissions will start. Uh, do you really think that our universities have the capacity, uh, you know, to uh, you know bring in new uh, hundred level students when those in hundred level currently have not moved to two hundred level? You, you know, COVID nineteen has become the new normal, and if you had followed the trend very carefully, you would have seen that a lot of universities have gone online, uh, conducting lectures and. Uh, even before the COVID, many of them had uh, finished their first session. Some of them, first semester, sorry. Some of them were about running their second semester before they got caught up by the COVID-19. And uh, because it has become the new normal, uh, we're thinking ahead. The tertiary institution are also thinking ahead because we don't know when this whole thing will go away. And um, many of them have migrated to the online platform and they're going on with their lectures and some of them are writing examinations. So I believe that uh, a good number of them will be able to follow suit with the timetable. All right, uh, very uh, optimistic, uh, Dr. Benjamin. What would you want to say to uh, JAM uh, candidates, those awaiting results? Well, um, I only want to say things that concern the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board and our mandate is that we, we regulate admissions as a paid candidate who have uh, their result as at the time admission is being conducted. If you don't have result as at that time, it is assumed that you're not qualified for that exercise. But I want to believe that uh, government is already thinking 
and a lot of things are put on the table, I believe that in no distant time a solution will be arrived at. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Benjamin, for your time. Thank you so much, Dave. All right, it's still Panorama. The United Nations Deputy Secretary General, Amina Mohammed, says Nigeria has one of the best implementation models for the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. Speaking on NTA's program, Late Edition, the UN Deputy Secretary General notes that, however, that the model will require national ownership and global partnership to succeed. So I think we have the best uh, roadmap that works both locally and globally. Um, but it has to come together because many developing countries right now don't have the resources uh, for the level of poverty and inequality that we're seeing um, and for the level of resources that are needed for investing in infrastructure which will allow that to happen. Um, and this is where the call for greater partnerships is required. We have a roadmap uh, and this is what should be uh, supported uh, by everyone from the local governments uh, to state governments, the country, um, its parliaments, um, civil society and business. The Senior Special Assistant to the President on SDGs, Adejoke Aralukbe Adefuluri, says funding of the 2030 Development Agenda remains a major challenge for the country. We're, we're discussing that how to institutionalize the financing framework to see how we can then get more domestic uh, resource mobilization, uh, uh, funding from the donors and partners, and of course international funding. So. To, to, to put together to, to ensure that this uh, agenda is well implemented and uh, accelerated. And heading to the eastern part of the country now, a number of state council of traditional rulers has commended President Muhammadu Buhari for the developmental projects going on in the southeast. The traditional leaders in a meeting convened by elder statesman Prince Aso Eze said the South East has not had it so good in terms of infrastructural development for many years now. Utena Mwokoi has the details. The East part of Nigeria no doubt has contributed immensely towards the socio-economic development of the nation. But some opinion leaders in the zone believe the region is not getting a fair share in terms of infrastructural development and resource control. Now, President Muhammad Buhari-led administration is changing the narrative by executing various developmental projects in the zone, especially those abandoned by previous administrations. These include ongoing repairs at the Akani Biam International Airport, Enugu, ongoing construction of Second Niger Bridge on each Enugu Expressway, among other projects in the zone. This meeting of all traditional rulers in Anambra State convened by Prince Atoeze is to highlight these achievements by the present administration. The royal fathers are excited with this project which they believe will open up a vista for development in the region. For the elder statesman Prince Atoeze, President Buhari is a tribalized Nigerian who means well for all. He gave us one of the best roads in Africa, Edu Bonicha Road. And they also want to beg him to build on each seaport for the boats who are the importers. All the traditional rulers in Anambra State decided to come together to discuss their internal affairs and also to pass a resolution and support the president and commander in chief. From Ukulu in Dunokofia local government area of Anambra State, Uchen Nangwekoyo, NTA News. Now talking security in a renewed onslaught against court activities, 680 suspected courtists have been apprehended within seven months in Akwaibom State. While disclosing this to NTA News, the State Commissioner of Police, Imohimi Edgar, said 430 of them are currently facing trial in various courts across the state. Clement Barakiu reports. The increasing cases of court activities in part of Akwaibom State, including primary and secondary schools, propelled Governor Dom Emmanuel to sign an order proscribing 51 court groups early in the year. The police took it from there and has been re-strategizing to end the scourge of cultism. Apart from strengthening and re-equipping the anti-cultism unit of the force, the State Police Command is building a strong intelligence gathering base through the Community Policing Advisory Committees. Based on intelligence, uh, arrested um, well over 
680 um, cultists, uh, 430 of, of whom are currently being prosecuted. Uh, I have also not spared my policemen who have been confirmed, who have asked cultists. Uh, you recall that one, I dismissed one who was confirmed to be a cultist, reduced one in rank uh, for, for, for aiding and abetting cultism. A selected local government area has had its own share of these cult activities, and this explains the people's excitement over the inauguration of the Local Government Community Policing Advisory Committee. It is a responsibility that we must live up to expectation. With the inauguration, the people are upbeat that cultism and other crimes will soon reduce. From Esreket, Clement Barkui, NTA News. In other news, the Federal Roads Safety Corps has uh, condemned the unruly attack by a tricycle operator in Benin, Edo State, and an officer of the Corps on patrol operations and damaged the patrol vehicle. A statement by the Court Marshal, Dr. Baboye Oyeyemi, expressed displeasure at the incessant abuse of personnel and uh, damage to its property across its formations nationwide. He, however, commends the patriotic citizens that assisted in arresting the criminal and has also ordered the prosecution of the perpetrator of that crazy act of humiliation and recklessness on law enforcement agents. He however reminded members of the public that law enforcement agents serve the common interest of the general public and deserve to be respected and not humiliated in the course of their duty. And on sports, Chelsea defeated Manchester United 3-1 on Sunday night in the semi-finals of the English FA Cup, setting up a final clash with Arsenal away from football. Nigeria's flag could be flying again in ultimate fighting championship as a Manzi Marcus reports on Sports Update. Another history will be made on September 19 when Nigerian-born New Zealand-based UFC middleweight champion Israel Adesonia takes on Brazil's Paolo Costa in a 185-pound title fight. It will be the second time in UFC history that a pair of undefeated male fighters will meet for an undisputed title following that of Rashad Evans and Leo Tomashida in 2008. Adesonia, with a record of 19 wins and no loss, will be defending his belt against Paolo Costa of Brazil. Brazil, who has 13 victories with no loss. The fight is expected to take place either in Las Vegas or Abu Dhabi and was shifted forward because of COVID-19. In football, Los Angeles Galaxy in the American Major League Soccer will have to play without the services of their star striker Chicharito, who is out for a month with a strained calf. Javi Hernandez, who was injured on Thursday, missed Saturday night's game against rivals Los Angeles FC. The 32-year-old Mexican failed to score in all three games for the winless club before the stoppage of play in March due to the coronavirus pandemic. Meanwhile, President of the International Olympic Committee, Thomas Bach, may stand unopposed for a second term in office when his first term ends in 2021. In his speech at the virtual IOC session, the German said, if you, the IOC members, want, I am ready to run for a second term as IOC president and to continue to serve you and this Olympic movement, which we all love so much. Athens, Greece is to host the 137th IOC session in 2021 when the presidential election is expected to hold, but the executive board will look into the matter once more in view of the coronavirus crisis. With sports of the Manzi Marcus, NTA News. All right, let's now take a quick public service announcement before we go. And that's Panorama today. Many thanks for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.